We need a completely different approach to teaching, which recognises the potential in every child. I did pretty well at school in the conventional sense. I did well at exams. And I came out of school saying, oh yeah, I'm pretty smart. And then I started coming across all these basic life skills. And it turned out I was a total klutz. I couldn't do them. Other people, it turned out, were pretty good at doing. I had friends who could do them effortlessly, and I thought, wow, that's smart. And then I found they were bottom of the class. They were dismissed as being stupid. And I began to see that there were highly intelligent people in conceptual thinking, in art, in mechanics, in engineering, in creativity of all kinds, who were just written off at school. It's not them who have failed. It is the system that has failed. But in classic neoliberal fashion, the individual gets blamed for the systemic problems. I've done some volunteering with an adventure learning charity which takes kids out into interesting environments. Kids often have never been to the countryside before, never seen the sea before. There was this kid who just stood out as a shining light. He was quite amazing. He was just on it all the time and he was right at my shoulder all the time, dead keen. Whenever I asked a question, his was the first hand that shot up and he always had an interesting answer. I said to his teacher who was there on the trip, that kid is brilliant. She said, what, him? And I said, yeah, yeah, he's a genius. It's obvious, he's just absolutely brilliant. Oh, well, I must tell him that's not something he would have ever heard before. I thought, he's unrecognised. The school doesn't know what it's dealing with here. It doesn't realise that it's got this amazing child on its hands because it's not looking for his variety of intelligence. And I think there's loads of kids like that. In fact, it's pretty amazing that any kid is happy to be stuck behind a desk. You think what you like at that stage of childhood, you're fizzing with energy and excitement and the world is a fascinating place, a wonderful place. And we sit them down for hours at a time, staring forward, being fed stuff. It's actually pretty miraculous that that works for anyone. Now, what I know as an ecologist is that systems are far more resilient if they're diverse. I'm sure the same thing pertains to the human experience. If you all looked at the world in the same way, when some disruptive change came along, you'd be much less able as a group to deal with it. By having all these diverse intelligences within a human community, that community is stronger, more robust, more resilient than it would be if we only thought one way. So what do they do at school? Teach everyone the same way. Everyone is just drilled in the national curriculum. You just squeeze down that processing line and you all have to tick the same boxes. You all have to take the same tests. You all get taught in exactly the same way. And the narrower that curriculum becomes, the fewer people it's going to work for and the more people are going to be written off as dunces and maybe eventually even excluded from school. And what makes this particularly paradoxical today is that if you're going to have any chance of surviving in the age of automation, the key skills you're going to need are creative and social skills. At the moment, whole tranches of the population are basically written off as prison fodder or post-industrial minimum wage workers, whereas actually among those people, there's going to be all sorts of incredible potentials. And what our task should be is to allow every kid to fulfill the amazing creative potential that they might have. Not necessarily just in work, in all areas of life. Everyone has got something which they're going to be able to do really well. And if the system is not discovering that something, it is not the child who has failed, it is the system that has failed.